Okay. So this talk is going to be about how you find local and endpoint extreme values using essentially the second derivative test, but there's going to be some situations where it's inconclusive and I've added a few more things you can do to, to settle some of those cases and that's called the higher derivative test. So actually it's like the procedure is the second derivative test and in cases where it's inconclusive we do a little more work and that more work is a higher derivative test. Okay, uh, we are working with a function which is twice differentiable on the interior of, so it's defined on an interval. Okay, and on the interior of the interval it's twice differentiable and it's uh, continuous at the endpoints. Uh, and hopefully, let, let's say uh, continuous and one-sided differentiable at endpoints. Okay, so the first step is you have a function f. The first step is you calculate f prime and f double prime, just formal expressions. Okay. Okay. And uh, then you, your second step is you find the critical points. Now, in general, what are the two types of critical points you could have for a function? Where the derivative is zero or doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. However, in our case, we are assuming the function is twice differentiable on the interior. Uh, and then points we deal with separately. So, so therefore, that derivative doesn't exist cannot happen because in fact the second derivative is in this case, right? So the critical points are only the ones where the derivative equals zero. Okay, so we found those. Uh, so actually, if you contrast this with the first derivative test, the first derivative test also sort of is pretty much similar. But now this now is where we actually sort of diverge from the first derivative test. So once you found the critical points, you evaluate f double prime. You calculated the expression here. Right? You now evaluate that expression at each critical point. Okay. And now these cases are basically, this is just a statement of the second derivative test. If f double prime at a critical point is uh, less than zero, that means that uh, f prime is decreasing, which means it's uh, going from positive to negative, which means the function is going from increasing to decreasing, which would mean you have a local max. And if f double prime at critical point is greater than zero, then you have a local min. Okay. F double prime greater than zero means f prime is increasing, which means it's going from uh, negative to positive because at the point it's zero. And uh, if it's going from negative to positive, that means the function is going from decreasing to increasing. The so decrease on left, increase on the right, so local min. So I just gave a quick explanation of the test. But you can watch the video on the second derivative test for more. Okay. Uh, so so these cases, for those critical points where you get in either of these cases, you can determine whether it's a local max or local min. Well, if the second derivative at the point is zero, then you have a, what's called an inconclusive case. What does inconclusive mean? Uh, no conclusion. Yeah, so it could be a local max, it could be a local min, maybe it's neither. We don't know. Now, if there are no inconclusive cases, you stop here. You're done. Right? You've found all the local max and local min. Because any local max or local min has to be a critical point. However, if there are some inconclusive cases, then you have to do some more work. So now you find f triple prime, the third derivative. So you have to go back to the expression for f double prime and actually differentiate that expression formally. Now, if this is non-zero, so if f triple, so at, now you evaluate this one again at all these inconclusive points, right? Mm -hmm. At each inconclusive point, if at that inconclusive point f triple prime is value ha is non-zero, then that point is not a point of local maximum. But if the third derivative value is also zero, then it's still inconclusive. So, uh, if if there are if there are among the the ones where this was inconclusive, if you have some cases where the third derivative is also zero, then it's still inconclusive. And so, what do you have to do then? Take higher. Derivative. Take the fourth derivative. Check again. Okay. If, if you still have points for the fourth, among the ones where it's still inconclusive, the ones where it's less than zero, greater than zero, you can settle. The ones where it's equal to zero are still inconclusive, so you take the fifth derivative. So you don't, uh, I mean, just to save effort, you don't calculate all the derivatives in the beginning, right? You just keep calculating the next derivative if there are still inconclusive cases. Just save you effort. Now, how do you settle it? Well, for any critical point, if the first time it gets a non-zero value derivative is at an odd position, like third or fifth or something, then it's not a local maximum. If the first time you get a non-zero thing is at an even position, okay, 
then like the second one that is the usual second level test or the fourth one or the sixth one or the eighth one then it's a, a local maximum and the sign condition is the same as for the second derivative test less than zero means local max greater than zero means local max. Uh, finally you have to settle the endpoints and uh, for the endpoints you can just try the one-sided derivative test so you you already calculate f prime if it's a uh, if the derivative sort of extends continuously to the endpoints then uh, then you can just evaluate f prime at uh, the one-sided you can just evaluate this expression of the endpoints you get the one-sided derivatives and figure out whether it's an endpoint max or not so for the endpoints you don't use second derivative tests generally uh, yeah by the way so 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 because you're not assuming the function is more than twice differentiable it may so happen that that once you fail here you are inconclusive because you're not able to differentiate more times there could be various problems with applying the higher derivative test but this is just this is the best hope we have if you are in an inconclusive case here okay so uh, this test is actually weaker than the first derivative test which means if the first derivative test is conclusive then the second derivative uh oh, sorry if the first derivative test is uh inconclusive then the second derivative test or higher derivative test will also be inconclusive but if the for if the it may so happen that the first derivative test is conclusive and the second and higher derivative tests don't work uh, okay so that could happen so it's weaker but it's may, in many ways easier to use because you're just evaluating everything at a point rather than trying to figure out the sign of the derivative on intervals which is what you do in the first derivative test okay so in the next video we'll do an example of this